The Golden Knights missed the playoffs for the first time in franchise history. And like every year, win or lose, the team we saw this season will look very different next year. However, there is one constant moving forward. In a Fox 5 special report, Vince Sapienza introduces us to one of the most recognizable faces from the Fortress, Vince. Yeah, guys, we're talking about the choice voice of T-Mobile Arena. Back in November, we pulled back the curtain at the Fortress and showed you the secret sauce of the Golden Knights pregame production, the atmosphere, a thing of legend around the league, and part of that medieval mystique is the national anthem. Carnell Johnson, better known as Golden Pipes, has taken a standard segment at a sporting event and turned it into one of the most anticipated and iconic moments prior to puck drop. As performers, we get told no so many times, and you have to get used to it. Go to audition after audition after audition, 999 times you get told no thank you. But it takes that one yes, and you never know where that might be coming from. Please welcome Golden Pipes, Carnell Johnson. This has blown up beyond my expectations. Right there. Before he was Golden Pipes, he was known simply as CJ. Like the Knights, he is Vegas born and was an award winning vocalist during his high school career at Green Valley. If you would have told high school me, hey, you are actually going to be a performer, I would have been like, hmm, okay, I guess. But it wasn't what I wanted back then. You know, and I definitely. You know, kind of, I, I definitely would have been surprised. A surprise to him, but not his mentor, Kim Ritzer. She's been in charge of the choir for more than three decades at Green Valley High and was a witness to his development from day one. I met him when he was born and um, I changed his diapers, um, sat him on my knee. I was doing music education at UNLV and we had to do an elementary portion and so I would learn all these songs that, you know, so I'd sit him on my knee and sing the songs to him and he'd sing with me. The melon on my head and let the juice slide <laughs> through. It's been kind of fun having somebody there that's seen me, you know, that, that's not blood related but is still family, that has seen that growth in me. It is kind of crazy but I also at the same <clears throat> time think, yeah, if anybody could do it, it could be him. After graduating in 2000, Johnson spent the next 16 years using his UNLV degree to teach, as well as using his talent on the strip, most notably as a Venetian gondolier over the course of 10 years. It's, it's hard and people don't understand, you know, yeah, I'm not in New York waiting tables for 12 hours a day, you know, breaking away to go to an audition but I'm still grinding in a different way. By 2017, the grind had wore Johnson down to the point that he was prepared to pack up and leave Las Vegas. I had even gone to New York. I had done auditions there. I'd gone to all LA, I'd done auditions there. And you know, it was starting to take its toll and I was like, I need a reset. But then this happened. The Vegas Golden Knights. Out of the desert sprang the NHL's newest team, and with that, new opportunity for performers like Carnell Johnson, who was one of more than 600 singers looking for a shot. He was memorable. He has this kindness to him. He has such a powerful, powerful gift, and his voice is incredible. So yes, he made an impression on auditions. Um, he got the highlight from everybody of like, yeah, book him. Johnson was one of a handful of anthem singers selected to perform throughout the inaugural season. But it wasn't until February 13th when the previously scheduled performer called out sick, setting up the first of many iconic moments. I don't remember if it was a winner or a loss or whatnot. I just remember he crushed it. They called me next week. Can you do the Canadian anthem? Yeah, come in and do it. Call me the week after that. We need an anthem singer tonight. Can you do it? Yeah, <laughs> you know, just kept saying yes. He put his yes on the table. The team continued to win. The result was him winning. Not just the support of the fans, but VGK management as well. I looked at George McPhee and I was like, uh, George, I've got this particular artist who's headlining on the strip right now, booked for the next game. What do you want to do? And he goes, we don't change. It wasn't until the middle of the second season the team made Carnell Johnson the permanent anthem singer moving forward. And while his voice played a huge role, it was his silence that cemented the decision. Once 
I get there, I was just like, why even try? There's 18,000 people here, there's one of me. Don't sing it, you know, point the mic out to them, shows them, hey, you guys got this part. What I'm told is that I was the first to do that, to not say the night part. Over 100 games later, Golden Pipes is a household name, even in the flurry home. And I caught eyes with him and he just kind of looked at me and he was just like, good job. And I was just like, hey man, good job. And I turned around and I just started freaking out. I was just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, flurry just said hi to me. Okay. And like the flower has in the past, later this year, Golden Pipes will be immortalized by the National Bobblehead Hall of Fame, becoming just the third anthem singer to earn such an honor. <laughs> At first, I was like, this isn't real, you know, someone's pulling my leg. I did more research for a couple days and found out, oh, this is legit. He's incredible and he's iconic now. And like, it's just an example of the magic that is Vegas. You know, it's, it's what a sports team who claims to be Vegas born is supposed to do. And you find these people that resonate with your fan base. And sometimes it's players and sometimes it's broadcasters and sometimes it's an anthem singer. It definitely does mean something to me that a Vegas native still made it in Vegas. And it doesn't just mean something to the man holding the mic but all of those hoping to earn their own spotlight one day. They aspire to be like him. It gives them pride also to say that, hey, that kid was sitting in these seats just like me, and maybe someday I can do that too. These are the people who are coming up to me and saying, you know, we love what you do and everything. These are the people who made it possible. Thankfully, this team will be here for a long time, and I fully plan on being here as long as they are, and as long as they keep having me back. I love the brain.